Soccer players, you have to watch this. These are nine skills that the best soccer players all have. In this video, I'll show you all these different skills as well as some helpful advice on how you can start implementing these skills into your own game. It's just passing it into a corner. Okay, so when I come in here, if he's giving me a little angle, if I can see space in one of the corners, I wanna pass it there. So it's almost going outside of the post and I'm putting it into that corner. That's gonna increase my chances of scoring that type of finish. Or I could use the outside of my left, something like that. So think about the shape of your finish, but he's coming out and it's a little too tight and he's going down to the ground and you're gonna do something like that, go over him. Okay, he's coming out and when he gets too close, that's when I wanna go over, okay? So it's like I'm here and I'm getting him to commit to the shot and then I'm flicking it over him. So say I receive it, I'm running at pace, he's running out to meet me. Again, it's just a touch away and pass it into the back of the net. So if I hesitate in this position and I do it too late, he's gonna win the ball like that. If I can get him to commit a bit, so maybe that is a, a fake shot like that, and then I'll just pass it in the corner. So those are three ideas to think about when you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the keeper. So you don't want to stop the ball dead, you want to keep that ball moving. And sometimes that's just changing direction, but it's better to keep moving, changing direction, than to just stay still, to freeze, and to not really know what to do. You're either getting out of your feet, playing a pass, or you're keeping it moving, making yourself more difficult to tackle. But just turning, is gonna create some space for yourself so you can play a pass. So you'll find, start doing this when you're playing quick turns. Okay, it's gonna be tough for the defender to get to the ball. So again, it's about protecting the ball. Pulling away to create space to play a pass. Pulling it away so then I can play the pass. But especially when someone's rushing at you, a quick step over in the midfield will create a lot of space. So when you're in these situations, think about one quick move and then explode away. Again, find space. Okay. And sometimes the best move, I always say, just a change of pace, change of direction. Whenever possible, you do not want to stop the ball dead in your feet. You want to take a positive first touch into space. This is going to allow you to play much quicker, to attack with speed, and keep possession of the ball. When dealing with a defender, try to beat them with your first touch rather than stopping the ball dead at your feet. You can also protect the ball, but think about taking the ball away from the defender with your first touch. When dealing with long balls, it's all about reading the flight of the ball. So be light on your toes and anticipate the ball. Try to get your body in front of it. The best soccer players are great passers. They're great playmakers. I would encourage you to check out these seven different styles of passing and do your best to master them with both feet. Practice sprinting like you practice shooting and you'll be faster in no time. The first step to getting faster is consistently sprinting and building the muscle memory in your legs. I'm out of breath, I'm uncomfortable. This is where you need to get. This is what you need to feel. The reason you're not fit is because you don't feel this enough. You don't push yourself to this point enough. You come to the field and you hit dead balls and you have a nice relaxing time and then you show up on game day 
and wonder why you get tired so easily. It's because you don't make yourself tired enough. If you can go forward, whether by dribbling into space or by playing passes and combining with teammates, you need to go forward, you need to get forward. However, if you cannot get forward, you must keep possession of that ball. Do not give this ball away cheaply. Do not force the play. Should you still take guys on? Absolutely. If that's the right decision and beating this guy will allow you to put a cross in the box or beating these guys will allow you to get a shot off, then go for it. When defending, you should ask yourself two questions. Number one, where should I be? Number two, what should I be doing? We quickly want to get back into our shape. We want to get close together so now we can defend together. If we're spread out like this, it leaves massive gaps, okay? So we want to get close together as a unit in our team formation. That ball moves out here, we move together. So you're always thinking about where's the ball and where are my teammates? I need to move in relation to both of those things. If you are the closest player to the ball, you should be pressing the ball. You should be forcing him to make a mistake or forcing him to go backwards. If that ball comes to you and you're the closest to the ball, pressure that ball. What does everyone else do? We think about the next pass. We think about where this guy may want to play and we stay in our formation and we close those passes down. So if you think he's gonna play there and this is the closest guy to you, you wanna stay with him. You wanna anticipate that that ball's coming in there and then you can cover like that and then everyone comes back into our positions. But if that ball gets played there, you're the closest there, you press, everyone else is thinking about where the next pass may be and we're moving up together like this. You should always be looking over your shoulder, shoulder checking, whether you're running or you're just defending. Be aware of what's around you. If you're receiving a pass, waiting for the ball, know what's behind you, know what's in front of you, know what's to the side of you. Always looking around, checking where your options are, where your teammates are, who's closing you down. But you can't do that if you have your head looking at the ground. Confidence is your responsibility. If you're not confident, Stop looking for other people to improve your confidence. Do something about it, take responsibility. Confidence should be inside of you. Positive self-talk. I can do this, I can become better, I can overcome this obstacle, I can bounce back from this, I am good enough. Be on your own team. Do not do what most players do and bring yourself down with that negative self-talk, saying I'm not good enough, these guys are better than you, why don't you just give up, you can't handle this, you're not gonna make it. But that is the truth about what's going on in most players' minds, so don't be that player. Confidence comes from competence. You wanna be the best player on the pitch? Practice more than everyone else. You want to become better at shooting, practice your shooting. The more effort you put into developing yourself, the more confidence you will gain. Before that pass is even played, I already want to be owning my space and stealing some of his space and really initiating contact with my arms, with my butt, with my body. If I'm just always playing with my feet, I'm only using half of the tools available to me. If I receive it on this foot, that's easy for him. He can win that all day. Initiate contact, keep him as far away from you as you can. The lower I am, the more strength I can produce. If I'm trying to hold him off up here, push me around, okay? It's hard for me to keep my balance, but if he's pushing me down here, Okay, the lower I get, the stronger I can be against him. Even if he's a big, strong, six foot five center back, I can still keep him off if I'm down here. That's what being a smaller player is almost an advantage. So as he moves, trying to get the ball, I'm trying to get in front of him, stay low. If I'm just like this, this is a foul. But if my eyes are on the ball and I'm just moving my body, using my body, that's how you play the game. That's how you use all the tools available to you. Okay, I'm just moving, shifting in front of him, wherever it goes. Sometimes I'll move the ball if I need to but always shifting my butt, my arms, my legs, using everything I can to protect the ball. Obviously, use your technical skills to get yourself out of trouble, but start thinking about using your body more often. If you only use your skills to keep the ball away from opponents, you'll get knocked off the ball and lose possession far too often.